we've had Thursday's visits on the Play Days bus. Here we go. It's a play bus. But where does it go? Little sister star, watch for the sign of the lollipop. It's the Patch Stop with Peggy Patch. Peggy Patch is out today to find a patch to stop and play. Where will it be? Who will she meet? Has the bus stopped at the end of your street? Peggy's got off the bus and she stopped at a place where there's water and long grass and reeds. And there's lots of small creatures wriggling around in the water and above the surface. And although the place looks like it's in the country, it's actually in the town. Peggy's at a pond. And the pond is in a nature centre, which is a place where children can come and look at the pond life close up and learn all about them. Peggy's going to have a look round. Why don't you come with her? something Peggy. A couple of fish. Better put them back make sure they stay alive. There's lots of ponds around here and over there two of Peggy's friends Oliver and Wenning are making a new pond and they're planting reeds to make the pond more attractive to all the small creatures around so that if they pass by they might look in and see it and say oh that looks nice. I think I'll make my home there. All right, let's see what's in here then, eh? Oh, look, look. Can you see there, the little frog? Little tiny baby one. Let's see if we can get him, shall we? I think he knows we're coming. Come into the net. Into the net. Oh, there we go. And he's in the net. Let's put him in the tray. Oh, can see him on the tray. Let's see if we can put him in a jar. Oh, look, it's gone again. Off into the corner. Let's see what else I can find, eh? All right, let's see if we can get some fish this time. Oh, look, there we go. It worked this time. There we go, little fish. Should we see what sort it is? Right. It's quite small. Uh, I think... Could be... Stickleback. He's got little things on his back. I think he's a stickleback. Right, let's see what else we can find. Let's see if we can get on the bottom. Let's go under the bottom a bit. Under the reeds and the weeds. Nothing that time. They're all too quick for me, aren't they? I know, let's see if we can get a snail. That'll be good. Oh, 
got a snail and a fish. Let's put them into the tray. And swim around together. I think that's another stickleback because it's a smaller version of the other one that I caught. So it's two fish and four snails, that's not bad. Peggy Patch is hoping to find a creature living in the grass by the ponds to say hello to. Say hello to this creature. A creature with a sleek skin and a flicking tongue who looks very much like a snake. But though its body wriggles, that's a mistake because it's a slow worm. Found one, Peggy. This slow worm lives at the nature centre because normally in the wild they're very shy creatures and you probably wouldn't see one. See the way she's wriggling in and out of my fingers? It's because she likes the warmth. And she might look a bit slimy, but she feels really smooth. She's really nice. If you see one, it's a good idea not to pick one up because it might be a snake. But this is a slow worm. And they're good for the garden because they eat all the slugs. People say that they're called slow worms because if they see you in the wild, they stop moving, they freeze. Shall we put her into the earth and see if it's true? Oh, see her burrowing away. Peggy Patch has a book. A book about a friend. A friend who has adventures. What happens in the end? Hercules Goldfish lived in a bowl and swam round and round through a rock with a hole. His bowl in the bathroom on a shelf by the loo was placed by the children for the very best view of the bright shower curtains all covered in fish for him to talk to if he should wish. But Hercules didn't think much of his home. In much bigger waters he wanted to roam. Then, as he peered through the glass at the loo, he realised exactly what he would do. He leapt from his water and dived through the air into the toilet and gave Dad a scare. He swam in the darkness round the yew bend and slipped down the waste pipe right to the end. Now Dad and the family were terribly sad. That fish was the first pet they'd ever had. They decided to find him, whatever the cost. Mum rang the waterboard, said what was lost. A goldfish, they said. You'll never find that. How about getting a nice ginger cat? Sadly, Mum turned and said with a tear, It's the end of poor Hercules' goldfish, I fear. Meanwhile, Hercules, down in the drain, was caught in the flood from a shower of rain. He didn't enjoy all the bashing about especially when churned up and washed through a spout and into a sewer all dirty and black. The smell was disgusting, but he couldn't go back. Now Hercules wanted his old goldfish bowl and to swim round and round through the rock with a hole. Eventually, out of the sewer he flopped and into a large reedy river he plopped. This was a river of wide open spaces with green weedy hideouts and dark secret places. Just the right home for a goldfish to play. He liked it so much he decided to stay. Then a large pike floated up from below and Hercules thought it was time he should go. He swam and he swam. He was very afraid. He realised the awful mistake he had made. Hercules longed for his old goldfish bowl and to swim round and round through the rock with a hole. Just when the pike had swum very near, Hercules disappeared over a weir. The river was wider down near the sea. Hercules wondered where he could be. The water was mucky and murky and grey. Deep in the darkness, he soon lost his way. Strange, ugly shapes loomed out of the mud. Eyes in the shadows made his heart thud. Slowly the water began to clear, and Hercules saw all the shapes disappear. He found himself tossed on the crest of a wave, backwards and forwards. He had to be brave. The salt in the water was not very nice, and the sea was so big. 
He wished he'd thought twice before leaving his home in the old goldfish bowl, where he swam round and round through the rock with a hole. The waves brought him nearer and nearer the shore. He wondered what dangers there might be in store. Just as he steadied himself for more shocks, a wave threw him into a pool in the rocks. Along came two children, who peered with wide eyes. Look, here's a goldfish, they said in surprise. Hercules found himself scooped in a net and taken back home as the children's new pet. There in the lounge was a very large tank, and deep in the fresh weedy water he sank. Then Hercules saw something rather peculiar, a goldfish like him. She said she was Julia. With someone to talk to and play with and chase, Hercules knew he had found the right place. He no longer thought of his old goldfish bowl, where he swam round and round through a rock with a hole. Nice. Can I touch him? You can touch him. Do you want me to get him out? No. <laughs> I'll get her out. Come on. Oh, she's a bit shy. She doesn't like anything like that. There we go. Come on. There's a big leaf. Get her to come out. There we are. She likes being in the shade, you see, because oh, she's a sort of cold creature. Can you can stroke her. <laughs> it's all right. Moving again. There we are. Mm. What does it feel like? <laughs> Bumpy. Bumpy? Yeah. That's because it's got a hard back, hasn't it? That's his little knobbly back. Oh, it feels but all right. It feels all right, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and if you feel, if you feel here, want to feel here? Feel, feel on the side there. Just there, feel it. Maybe it's so soft Ooh, there. Keeps wanting to jump, doesn't she? It's so soft there. I can't it there. She's very big, isn't she? Yeah. It's nice there. That's because she, she doesn't come from this country. You see, she comes from a foreign country. And the ones in this country aren't as big as this. Is she? She eats, she eats, oh, she eats flies, slugs, things like that. Yeah! Oh, yeah, oh, but, she, but she likes them. So where might she like to live then? Well, if she lived outside, if she lived in this country, where do you think she'd like to live? In the pond. In, in the, the pond. Bits. In muddy, muddy bits, bits of the pond. That's right. Yeah, so, um, so she's kind of fine. So she can hide. So, so she, she can hide, hide. Hide. that's right. She and she can... So should we go and build her something then? Do you think that's a good idea? Mm, no. Right. Okay, so I'll put the toe back then. That's it, I'll put her in there. Put in the I can hear her breathing. I'll put it in the tank actually and then she'll crawl, she'll crawl in on her own, you see. I think she does. We'll cover it up like that and she'll like the shade then. And then we can come back for her later. Okay. Okay, should we put the water in then? That's it. Is it nice and cold? Yes, it's nice and cool. It's like a paddling pool. It is, isn't it? Yeah, That's a paddling pool for a toad. That paddling pool's out still out. It should stay there. Right, you think that's enough? Yeah, that's enough, isn't it? Now, should we put some mud around the sides? Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah, then I'll give that to you. Brilliant. You like getting muddy, don't you? Yeah. Right, you can take that one then. And you, you and Sophie can do that one. And Luke and I'll do this one. Okay? So put it... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that That's it. Uh, pat, pat it down so it's nice and sort of firm. Cover that over. That's it. And you can pat that down as well. I think the toad likes. Do you want it somewhere here? No, we can take some leaves off and put it in there. Okay. Take the plant out of there, like that. And we put the plant in there. You can have to the hop under there. That's right. Get you get a good long drink. I think that's enough. Yeah? That's it. You put some peat around it, that's it. Make it nice and damp. I think the pond's nearly ready now. Perhaps you'd like a bit more mud, though. Mud hunt. Mud hunt. Mud hunt. Everyone's off on a mud hunt. What makes mud? Water with earth or sand. Where's it found? Anywhere on the land. Mud hunt. Mud hunt. Mud hunt. Everyone's
top on a mud hunt. Some can bake it hard and brown. Soon get slushy when the rain comes down. Mud hunt. Mud hunt. Mud hunt. Everyone's up on a mud hunt. Peggy Patch's puzzle. Peggy has found very strange things hanging on a branch. Do you think they look like tea bags? Tea bags, are they? But what are they? Well, they're called cocoons and they're made by caterpillars. And if you look down here at the bottom, you can see a caterpillar making one now. And what happens is he takes a thread from his mouth and he spins it into a bed for himself and then he goes to sleep till he's ready to wake up again and when he wakes up he turns into a moth or a butterfly and these ones are going to turn into moths have another look at the caterpillar he's green but he's quite spotty and dotty too and if you look at him next to my finger he's quite big isn't he that's because he comes from a foreign country most of the caterpillars you find in this country are quite small in comparison and Peggy's only got him out so you can have a look at him today. Actually, I think he's spinning himself a bed. I wonder how long it'll be before he turns into a tea bag. Pictures of this, pictures of that. I like your pictures, says Peggy Patch. You painted them and coloured them, even stuck them with glue. I like your pictures, says Peggy. I hope you like doing them too. What am I? I'm a toad. Oh, don't forget the slow worm, a creature with a sleek skin and a flicking tongue that looks very much like a snake. But though its body wriggles, that's a mistake. Oh, there's the bus. You'll have to leave the toad, Peggy. She'll have to go back to a proper home now. Peggy will be out looking for another patch to play in next week. See you then. Bye. Bye.